flapping thing you were doing with your mouth just then? You mean, expressing my opinion? Yeah, that. No more of that. Please stop telling me I'm not a Christian. Honestly, that's not a very Christian thing to do. The only one I owe explaining is the one who did the saving. So thank the Lord that it's not up to you. Top three cheeses. Colby Jack. Colby Jack! <laughs> Hi ladies, how you doing? I wanna kill you! Oh yeah, take a number, honey. Okay, stop. I wanna tell you guys something, and I'm doing this for your benefit. I'm a Christian content creator, so I make a lot of Christian stuff on TikTok. So I get a lot of hate comments and bashings of Christianity, but that's not why I'm making this video. I just want to implore you people that if you have a problem with Christianity and you go around TikTok bashing Christian TikTokers, can you at least do your research first before you accuse God of doing bad things? I can't tell you how many times people come to me and say, well, isn't your God the one that sent a flood and killed thousands of people? To which I say, yeah, do you know why? And they shut up every single time. Like you're gonna accuse God of genocide, but you don't even know the reason why he did it, which he very specifically said in the book of Genesis. Dude, you look like a doofus right now. You wouldn't act that way at a science convention or a comic con and just say something really dumb and say it boldly and then get angry at everybody else for correcting you. So if I'm talking to you, just slow down, ask questions, stop being angry, and chill. Hello, I've been expecting you. Please, come inside. Make yourself comfortable. Grab a seat. Not that one! Would you like some tea? Anybody want to tell me what 1 Thessalonians 5.26 means? What is that? <laughs> huh? No, the other one! See? <laughs> Here's the aftermath of the story I just told. And wait to the end, because there's a part of the story that I did not tell you. So you can go back and watch the clip, but in short, we're doing an LA event. This guy comes up to me, he says, can you help me? And he's clearly on some sort of drug. Now the Holy Spirit tells me, and he says, he's going by a name that's not his. So I naturally say, hey bro, what's your name? And he goes, Clark Kent. Thank you, Holy Spirit, I could have figured that one out. So I ask him again, because I think he's joking at first. I'm like, bro, what's, what's your real name? He goes, my real name is Clark Kent. So we kind of like side shuffled from that conversation because this guy thinks he's Superman. And we just told him about Jesus. We just told him the gospel and we said, hey, bro, do you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? He said, sure. We're like, sick. So we prayed for him. And then we explained the baptism of the Holy Spirit so he can get filled with the Holy Spirit. And we politely asked him, do you want that? He said, sure. And we're thinking this is the easiest evangelistic moment we have ever experienced in our entire lives. And then my friend Malachi, who was just wrapping up the worship set for the event we were at, he comes in late, gets in the van, and he goes like, oh, hey, bro, my name's Malachi, what's your name? And this guy switches his name to Jason. And for the people who were there for the entire conversation, we were like, this dude went from Clark Kent to receiving Jesus to now going by his real name. What? But we, we didn't just leave him there. We actually gave him some steps. So we are working with the LA Dream Center. I would highly recommend you look it up because it is an amazing facility and an amazing organization. So we were around the area. We were a couple blocks away from it. And so we just point him to the direction. We're like, bro, we would love to help you. Just go to like this address, turn this corner. We give him directions. And then we got in our van and drove away. 
Mind you, when we drove away, he was at the intersection waiting to cross the street, looking at his phone. So we drove away and he was like not even paying attention to us. So when we pull into the parking lot, I go and run to my sister who was there at the time. And I was just telling her the whole story because I was just like fangirling the whole thing. And then I turn around and he is standing right behind me. Mind you, he was walking to the facility. We drove there and he nearly beat us there by walking. And I'm thinking, did this guy just pull a miracle out of action and just freaking teleport? To this day, I still don't know that answer. However, we did get him checked into the facility. They couldn't legally tell us if he got enrolled into their um, discipleship program where they would help him get off of drugs and everything. They couldn't legally tell me that. But the guy sounded like it was really, really good news what, the, when he was telling us. And he's like, I can't legally tell you anything, but... Well... Allow me to show you the door. Look, the door. I appreciate loyalty, but... It's the wooden thing with the knob. <laughs> what now go on apologize i hate apologizing same power trying to blow up why you playing games trying to grow up you've been reading bibles and leading studies and helping your little buddies but tell me what it's really doing for you they gonna still tell you you're faking for what's your name you don't know my name no, i know your name i just want to know if you know your name yeah. parker peter parker Admit it, Jack. You still love me. If you had a sister and a dog, I'd choose the dog. Suffering. You're a living sacrifice. You don't get to enjoy things anymore. You can- Hey, bro! Levi, I love you. You're a beast. Uh, I wanted to respond to you personally, but I felt like this is something that a lot of people can actually take away from this question. So if we're supposed to be a living sacrifice, then what's the point of even continuing anymore? And in that video, you were quoting Ecclesiastes, where he kind of kind of comes to terms that everything is meaningless and worthless under the sun. As a Christian, where does our joy come from? Because yes, we're not supposed to be living in this world. We're not supposed to uh, make attachments of this world because our eternity is in heaven. But we can enjoy the simple things, such as a day of rest or friendships. Ecclesiastes even talks about that. Overall, our entire hope and our entire fulfillment and joy is Christ himself. We don't have to wait until heaven to, re to receive Jesus. We can receive him now through the presence of this Holy Spirit, and that's where we find our joy. Ecclesiastes goes on to say that there's the only thing that's important in this life is to eat and drink with friends and have friendships and enjoy the friendships that we have right now. Okay, if you struggle reading the Bible, then this video is for you. I was hanging out with a friend and I noticed that he has a comic book Bible next to him on his desk. And I was like, dude, what is this? Because I, kn I know him knowing that he's a man of God and he knows the Bible very well. And he says, oh, I read this when I'm really confused on what the Bible is saying. And I sat there and I was like, that's a really good idea. <laughs> so there is actually an action Bible. This is what the cover looks like. There's an action Bible that you can get. This isn't a sponsorship or anything. But turns out, if you actually read the comic book version of a passage that you're really confused on, it really helps you get the full picture of what the Bible is actually talking about. So good little nugget. If you struggle reading the Bible, read the comic book version. Who knew?